We've basically only talked about Blackmagic cameras on this channel, a little bit of Canon, but there is one other brand that I think is criminally underrated. Ugh. That brand, of course, is Fujifilm, who release amazing cameras year after year. I've owned several of them, I think two or three, and I am a huge fan. Nothing's impressed me more than Fujifilm's new-ish video-centric model, though, which is, of course, the X-H2S. On paper, this thing sprints ahead of the competition. For the price of two Red Mags, we can record open gate 6.2K ProRes HQ internally with F-Log2, which is a great new gamma curve that Fujifilm's added. That gives us fantastic dynamic range, minimal rolling shutter, autofocus, IBIS, and fantastic battery life. Fujifilm has truly put pressure on the entire industry to match this level of value in a camera. So thanks, Fuji. We have open gate 6.2K at up to 30 FPS, DCI 4K up to 120 FPS, and HD up to 240 FPS, which is insane. I don't pay a lot of attention to resolutions and frame rates normally, but the fact that the X-H2S can perform these recordings with almost no rolling shutter absolutely blows my mind. The processor in this thing must be crazy fast. The lack of rolling shutter is such a pleasant surprise to me. When companies release cutting edge products like this, they tend to overlook the non-sexy but essential aspects of a camera body in favor of promoting insane resolutions that aren't useful for 90% of filmmakers. Fujifilm has somehow managed to do both. I would imagine that most of the time I'd be using DCI 4K and 10-bit 422 or ProRes, but it's really nice to know I can push the camera when the situation calls for it. Open gate is a really cool feature that not a lot of manufacturers are including in their prosumer cameras, and it's cool to be able to capture everything the sensor has to offer. It allows you to make decisions later in post-production as far as aspect ratio goes. It's much easier to make content traditional or vertical when you have the pixels to do both. Fujifilm has also added F-Log2, which is a new gamma curve that promises to be flatter and allow for more dynamic range, and I love it. It's easy to work with, and the dynamic range is indeed massive. Cine D clocked the sensor at around 12.2 stops of usable dynamic range with all noise reduction turned off, which is a fantastic result. As far as I know, DaVinci Resolve hasn't updated to include F-Log2 in Color Space Transform, which would be a bummer, but Fujifilm's proprietary LUTs are actually really nice. I love how they include F-Log2 to 709 LUTs, but also just a gamut transform in case you want to do the gamma curve yourself. There's also two more LUTs to transform to Eterna instead of regular 709. All four LUTs are excellent. Okay, so we have a couple shots here from the X-H2S, and first off, I just wanted to show, um, this is just with Provia, this is the standard film simulation. And just the colors coming out of the camera stock, we're not shooting in log or anything here, are fantastic. Fujifilm's got a little bit of a reputation for having, you know, gentle tones, rosy skin tones, greens look accurate, just the colors overall look fantastic right out of camera but what about what about f-log 2 so we've thrown on it's just f-log 2 to it's 709 this is just a regular conversion here and maybe we'll just throw a little bit of a more gentle let me pull that down a little bit yeah okay so highlight roll off I was impressed with for the most part you know this is a really extreme example but this could be much much worse especially after let's turn everything off so we can kind of see yeah there's a little bit of harshness here but all in all after a grade happens it's not too bad especially if you you know you can you can even fake a little bit of highlight roll off yeah not too bad dynamic range is massive of course the sensor is insane and and the the gamma curve is awesome i really 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 like fujifilm noise it tends to not be super colorful if we kind of zoom in here it's just really 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 granular and it, it seems to only be monochrome it's kind of almost like film grain already built in Love that. Super easy to work with. Really easy to denoise for some reason. Uh, Resolve really, really, really likes the this noise pattern. So colors are great. Dynamic range is great. 
Um, the only thing about the image of the X-H2S that is not my favorite, which is totally subjective, I find it to be just a little bit too sharp. If we kind of go in here, you'll know immediately if you like this look or not. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it's also, I mean, as easy as we'll just blur just a touch. And I think that's a better look. Again, this is very subjective. I, I, I find it to be just a little bit too sharp. You might love that sharpness. Here's another shot that's Provia, straight out of camera. I've already thrown on a little bit of blur on it, a little bit of gamma, and it's just fantastic right out of the gate. Okay, so this shot is super high ISO. We have almost no light coming in here. We have a little bit of these track lights, but they're very directional. So we'll start off with a conversion lock. I tried to expose this at zero, even though this was much, much, much darker than this is looking here. So what I would normally do is sort of pick a spot where I want my, my lights to be, and then create a little bit of a ramp find the spot where I want the shadows to be and then sort of ease off on this ramp. That's much closer to what this environment sort of looked like. And in that shot, if we go out of here, you can see what I was talking about with this noise. I could be crazy, but I think that it actually looks, the noise itself looks better in ProRes. This one is an H265 and it just feels a little crunchier somehow. But after a grade, if you wanna denoise, you totally can. I mean, blood light performance is perfectly usable. Like most modern cameras, you're not gonna have, you're not, you're just not gonna have issues. You can, you can really shoot in situations that you really should not be shooting in and still get a great image out of it. So, low light's great, colors are great. Dynamic range is fantastic. I love the noise. Footage is very, very sharp, um, which could be a good thing or bad thing, depending on what kind of shooter you are. All in all, the footage coming out of this thing is lovely. For my entire rental with this camera, I think I only charged the battery twice. It's hard to say how much time you'll get on each battery in real time, but I shot for hours on this single battery and it kept on going and going. This new processor is both blazing fast and extremely efficient. Because this is a mirrorless camera, the selection of lenses available to use is massive. Almost any SLR or vintage lens can be adapted to work perfectly with this camera body. And Fujifilm's own catalog of lenses is vast and excellent. They sent me a 16-55 to f2.8 with the camera body, and it's a fantastic general purpose zoom lens. Every Fujifilm lens I've used so far has been a solid performer, which is nice to have if you want to take advantage of autofocus. You can even use a speed booster for a wider field of view with the chance to use full frame lenses with minimal crop. The X-H2S is astounding. I was impressed and inspired by the image quality it's capable of every time I used it. I've owned the X-T2, X-T3, and X-T4. I love the ergonomics of those cameras, and I love the ergonomics of the X-H2S in a completely different way. With the H-series, Fujifilm scoots a little farther from the vintage styling and more towards modern sleekness. There aren't the old-school exposure dials on top, only buttons, and an LCD. The grip is nice and beefy and comfortable to hold on to. I found all the controls to be in logical locations, and everything feels premium and solid. There are enough dials and buttons to allow for full customization of the camera exactly the way the operator wants. And once you start developing some muscle memory, the X-H2S is really quick and snappy in the field. The menus can be a bit overwhelming in the beginning, as Fujifilm allows the operator to control nearly everything that happens within the camera. I spent about an hour within the menus when I first got the X-H2S, set it up the way I wanted to, and didn't have to dive too deep into the settings after that. I love the way Fujifilm sets up the shooting menu. It made changing frame rates, codecs, and resolutions really fast and easy. There's also a whole bunch of custom buttons all over the camera, which is awesome. I especially love this one, which I set to focus punch in. I use it at least once every single time I press record. Fujifilm has included a full-size HDMI, which I think should be expected in a video-centric camera. Thank you, Fuji. There's also a headphone and mic jack, and a USB-C for power and data. Very simple, but everything you need to get the job done. There's dual card slots on the other side, one being SD and the other being CF Express Type-B. 
If you're planning on shooting with the saucier recording resolutions or codecs, you'll probably need a CF Express Type B, but luckily they aren't that expensive. One essential feature in a mirrorless camera used for filmmaking is stabilization. Unless you're planning to add a whole bunch of weight and design a rig, which you can totally do for best results, there needs to be some kind of stabilization system. You can either find this in lenses, although Fujifilm doesn't have too many that include stabilization, or internally within the camera body. I'm always apprehensive when it comes to internal stabilization because most of the time they tend to make footage look kind of robotic and fake. It doesn't help that most people think IBIS is supposed to be a gimbal replacement and will judge how good a stabilization system is by walking with the camera and expecting there to be no camera shake. And in return, camera brands are overdoing most IBIS systems, which just cause corner warping and jerkiness. Footage ends up looking jarring and clinical, at least in my opinion. I've seen this in Canon cameras mostly lately, but my X-T4 also had an IBIS that was a little lackluster, which made me nervous to try out the system within the X-H2S. Fujifilm claims that the IBIS system has been improved, and I found that it was indeed much better. It wasn't overly sticky when panning and did a really good job smoothing out camera shake. It's a nice feeling to know that you can add almost any lens to a camera body and shoot without a rig, which in most cases defeats the purpose of a compact mirrorless camera in the first place. Another popular mirrorless assist feature is continuous autofocus. I don't tend to use autofocus when I'm operating a camera, but it's super helpful to have when you're recording yourself for content like this. In that case, the X-H2S works just fine. In my experience, it was accurate and quick and did a pretty good job staying locked on. I don't think I would use it very often while running the camera handheld, however. The X-H2S doesn't rack focus in a smooth, organic way, it just kind of slams into focus super quickly. Except I was totally wrong. You can go into the settings and control how fast the autofocus is racking, but it didn't seem to affect anything that much when I was testing it. It's because it doesn't go into effect until you press record. If you haven't pressed record yet, it's very snappy and gets focused really quick. But as soon as you press record, you can really dial in the smoothness. Good job, Fuji! The addition of autofocus is a very welcome feature, and I'm glad Fujifilm continually improves it. The X-H2S also has really excellent photo capabilities, which I won't be covering at all. I haven't invested a lot of time in learning the art of photography yet, but from what I can tell, this camera is more than capable if you're okay with an APS-C size sensor. The film simulations look really beautiful, and the few photos that I actually did take with this thing looked amazing right out of camera. I really, really love the X-H2S. It's got really impressive specs, but performs them all with mastery and without fuss. I was inspired while shooting with this thing, and color grading the images afterwards is even more inspiring. I was blown away by this thing and what it's capable of. I highly recommend the X-H2S if you're looking for a sort of compact mirrorless that is capable of shooting cutting edge images and will make your life easy while you're doing it.